Energy calculations. They are one of the most important factors when building a new home or renovating your home. We've talked about over the past couple episodes, we've talked about the different concepts that go into it and how to use it. But today, what we're going to talk about is the different software that's out there, depending on where you live, to be able to do your energy calculations. Now, a lot of times these are done by your architect or your builder, but we're going to talk today about which ones you can use if you want to, to kind of play around with it. So stay tuned. Hey, if you like what we're talking about today, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Go ahead and give us that thumbs up and also click the notifications button and select the bell at the top that says all. This way you'll be notified of any videos that we have up and coming or courses. Okay, so over the past couple videos, we've talked about energy calculations. We've talked about the things that go into energy calculations, the importance of the different components. But today we're going to talk about the different types of software that we use at ProCalx and other people use as well in order to perform the energy calculations for either a new construction home or a renovation, reconstruction, additions, and things of that nature. So we're going to go through all that today. So one of the big primary one in Florida, there's two main ones that we use in Florida. And one is called Energy Gauge. And then the other one is actually our HVAC design software called RightSoft. Now, RightSoft over the years has tried to help and grow to kind of fulfill all the different needs of their HVAC design companies. And one of the things that they did was come out with a version of their energy calcs for Florida. So when we do a new construction home at this time, right now, RightSoft only has uh, the format for new construction. When we have a new construction home in Florida, we are able to use RightSoft's Right Energy software, which is already in encompassed within the design software, which makes it very easy. But we're allowed to use that to be compliant with the state of Florida's new 2020 codes. Now, the original one that we started using before RightSoft came out with that was Energy Gauge. Let's take a look at energy gauge here. All right, so energy gauge, standalone software, you have to pay for this software. It's not free. You can go on energygauge.com and there's soft links on there that you can click on. You can get a free 30 day trial before you pay for it. And then if you like it, you can go ahead and pay for it if it's something that you need. Now, energy gauge, has its ability for us to input the information directly into energy gauge. Okay. So let's click on an example here of let's do the new 2022 code. So when I click on this and I click open project. Okay. It opens my project. Let's go ahead and make this bigger so everybody can see it. Okay. So what we do here is we're going to go through and enter, manually enter everything about the house. We can choose the climate, where it's located. Uh, we can even put utility rates in. For a basic energy calculation, this is not stuff that we worry about too much. When we want to get into Energy Star or HERS rating, which is a higher end level of energy calculation to really tweak things in, that's when we're going to get into standard utility rates, surroundings, and things of that nature. But for the basic energy calculations, sometimes we really don't need to go into this stuff. The things that we want to focus on is the spaces. The, you know, the nice thing about the energy gauge, if you enter the information is in, is it gives you a lot of options. It gives you a lot of ability to go through this and tweak things and modify and really figure out if the house fails to really be able to figure out why it's failing, what it has to go through, really gives you a good understanding of what you're doing. So you know when you're putting the data in, you're getting that, that visual feedback of what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong. And that's the one thing we like about the energy gauge. However, unless 
you manually put the information in. What, what I used to do when I started the company is I would put everything into WriteSoft. I would do my design. I would get my loads, my equipment, get everything done. And then WriteSoft had a link which would convert the WriteSoft file into an energy gauge file. I click a button. It converted it to, this is called an e, .env file. And it would convert it to energy gauge. And then I would open it up in energy gauge. Well, the problem, as in with a lot of computer things, they don't like to talk to each other. If there's any little teeny tiny thing out of whack, boom, error message in energy gauge. You would work on, I mean, I worked on projects for an hour. And I would go to save it, boom, error, crash. I mean, sometimes it would take me four hours to do an energy gap. Now, WriteSoft worked on it and, and got it better and fixed some things and tweaked some things. And it got better and better. And, of course, I got better and better at learning at what, what some of the, 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 the issues were and made sure that I, I tried to address them ahead of time. Um, but but in, in a sense, it would make it easier. But if you ran into those problems, it would take you two, three, four, five times as long. But you had no other option. Energy gauge was kind of like a rights off, or I'm not a rights off, kind of like a uh, Microsoft, you know, kind of a no monopoly on everything. But Energy Gauge was the only one around that you could legally use and the building departments would accept in the state of Florida for renovations, for new construction, for anything. But then Rightsoft came out with a nice version, but it was only for new construction. Now, when we do a renovation in the state of Florida, now this software here can be used outside of Florida, but we only use it for Florida, only. But when Rightsoft came out, we, Rightsoft does not have the ability to do renovations. It only has the ability to do the new construction at this time. Now they may, they may come out with another version, hopefully down the road, to make our lives a lot easier, ProCal. Um, but so... We do the same thing though. So if we have a renovation or addition or something and we do it in WriteSoft, we get everything set up, we still click and import it into Energy Gauge and then do the energy calculations. But again, if everything is not perfect, and even if it is perfect, sometimes things don't like to talk to each other. So you'll get these error messages, which can make the time, you think you're saving time by just clicking a button and copying everything over. And, you know, the great thing about saving that is that I don't have to go in and put every window and every wall and every air conditioning system and duct system and all that stuff. I don't have to manually put it all in and it saves me time. But if it takes me an extra hour because of the faults and the, the error messages and things like that, then it, it's really not helping. But we've kind of overcome that and we found some tricks and different things that we can do. But we use Energy Gauge in Florida only right now and only for renovations. Um, and it, it's a really good feedback. It, it gives you a lot of the abilities to find your reports that you need. So every, you know, all the different things, here's the 2020, 2017, here's your different ICCs. Now see these things here would be used uh, for possibly outside of Florida if we we're going to do it. But this is what we typically use right here. Florida envelope leakage, which is like your blower door. Um, you have your duct testing um, that you can do into here. And and with the duct testing and whatnot, it prints out a report. And it's kind of cool because we can go here to equipment. And then we find the air conditioning system that was put in. So here you can see that with the new code, they have the new SEER 2. We talked about that in one of our previous videos or SEER. Um, you can manually put all the values in. Now, these do come over from WriteSoft, but sometimes you have to go in and double check. But it allows you now when you go to the heating system, Heating system allows you to put in, if you have a furnace, your AFUE, uh, the capacity, and then the duct system. You can go in here and click on the duct system. Uh, proposed QN out and QN total. This is the duct leakage testing. What you're doing is until you physically install the duct system and go out and have it tested, you're kind of guessing at how tight or you're forcing the people who are installing the duct system to, to make sure that it's tight enough that it's going to pass this. Because if we print this out and the duct leakage testing has these numbers on it and the blo the duct testing company, blower door company comes out and they test the duct and it doesn't meet these values, it fails. So it's nice to be able to allow us to quickly go back if they fail to go back and change the values and then quickly click on it to see if it passes or fails 
the energy calculation. And sometimes we'll do that when they're when they're out on the job site. They'll give us a quick call and say, "Hey, the duct leakage came in at a point oh five. You have a point oh four five. Uh, can, can you change it? Okay, so we'll change it, and then we'll recalculate it. Does the energy calculation still pass? It does, and um, then they'll confirm with their numbers." And we've had that and people go out there and mask and tape up the ducts and things of that nature. So it's, it's pretty cool. You know, here I can go up and view, I can get rid of all the non Florida tabs. You can see here, a lot of those things disappeared. Um, hot, uh, the hot water heater or the water heater, cause the water's not hot when it goes in. So it's not a hot water heater. It's a water heater. Uh, so we got cold water going in and we're heating it up. Uh, but here is where you go in and put those values, the capacity, whether it's natural gas, so it's a great little software. I like it because it gives you a lot of it gives you a lot of understanding because you can see the tabs, you can see what's part of that tab, which is a little different than on Writesoft. Writesoft is easy because whatever you do in Writesoft, it automatically converts. There's no there's no error messages, there's no like the only error message you're going to get is if it doesn't pass or if you just did something stupid. All right, that's the only way. So but it it's not quite as learning and intuitive as this one. And I used this software when I got my class one uh, resident national energy reader license. This was part of our training and part of our classes and testing and stuff like that. Uh, so it, I like it for that reason. Just the problem, if, if this, if the communication between rights off the NIST worked much better, you know, this would definitely still be a software that we'd use more frequently, but rights off has just made it so easy for us. Um, to be able to do to to convert the energy calculations um, and and make sure that if we have to make a change, see if it fails in here, we have to make a manual change in energy gauge. But whatever change I make here, I have to go back and make that change in the load calculations as well. So I'm having to do double work. So if if I have a 14 sear heat pump on this and it fails, and I have to change it to a 16 sear heat pump to get it to pass. I now have to go back into my right saw file. I have to find the, the higher efficiency equipment, put it in there, and hope that nothing changes. Because if anything changes because of me changing the equipment, I then have to go back into the energy calculation software and change it there. Windows is a big thing for that. Because what will happen is if I can't pass, and I, I have energy gauge, and I can't pass with the windows that the homeowner wants to put in, or architect or the builder. And I have to change the windows to bring them down a little bit so that they're more efficient to get it to pass. Well, what'll happen is well, when I go back to my load calculation and I change those windows to more efficient, it's going to affect the size of my air conditioning system. And by affecting the size of my air conditioning system, that's going to bring the load down. But now I got to go back and change it there. I might have to change the loads. I might have to go back into the energy calculation software. So it was very, very time consuming. Now that's why energy gauge came out where you can do load calculations in energy gauge, which are just not as well defined and intuitive as rights off. That's what rights off does. And that's what they're great at. Um, they're the, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best load calculation software out there. Um, I've been using it for 20 years. It's had some issues, but great tech support. Uh, they really take care of our company. We have, you know, 40, 40 plus licenses and it's just, it's, it's just amazing. So let's, let's go take a look at that. So here, here's Writesoft, which is our load calculation software. And this is just a small little house that we did. Now, when we're doing, we're using, and this is called Write Energy in here. When we're using Writesoft, we're just doing our designs as we typically would. We're drawing the house out. You know, we go in here and we have all, we import an AutoCAD file. And when we import that AutoCAD file, we're basically tracing over it, creating the building within Writesoft. And then from there is where we go in and we put the different types of, of, of sliding glass doors and windows. And we go in, right click on this, we go in and we, we tell it what factors, what the U factor of the window is what the solar heat gain coefficient is, overhang, what's the overhang, what's the vertical uh, separation of that overhang. So different things like that. And after we're all done, which we're already going to do the load calculations. That's, that's part of what we do. After we're all done, we've, we've done the duct design, 
We got the ducks in there. We got that all set up. And we got that all figured out. We got the equipment selected. So we know we know what equipment we're going to be using. After that's all said and done, we go up to file code compliance. And then we go to Right Energy Florida 2020. Now, this is Form 405. If you listen to the, the classes that we did before this, the videos, we talked about the two different types. Form 405 is performance. And Form 402 is the prescriptive method. And 99% of houses in Florida aren't going to pass because of the requirements of that. But there are a lot of builders that strictly want to design on that. But there's a lot of homes because of air handlers not being able to be in attics or garages. They have to be in conditioned space. It ducks in conditioned space, the window values, it's much more costly to do a build a house that way. But it makes it more energy efficient. So when we click on this, it goes in and it opens up a file. And then I can... Now, if I've put all this information into the software ahead of time, a lot of it is automatically extracted and down and loaded into this. So I don't have to do any. I do have to change the terrain, whether it's suburban, ocean, lake, rural. I have to put some values in here. You know, if there's a subdivision or a plat book or something, I can put that information in. As you can see here, we don't have that at this point. You know, credits, you know, different credit options. So we go through all that. When we're all said and done, we come back here, we just click on run compliance. Okay. I run compliance. It's going to tell me if there's any mess errors. It's going to tell me what I can and can't do. It's going to tell me if I did something wrong on the design. And then it's going to tell me if I pass or fail. Okay. Now we talked about it in the other video. This pass or fail is based on a 1.0. Oh, that's the highest you can get and still pass. Anything higher than that, it fails. Anything lower than that means that the house is using less energy consumption than it was. So this house fails. And what we can do is we can kind of look at a couple things and go heating. Uh, obviously, I don't have any heating setup or cooling. It tells you what uh, what your proposed is. It'll tell you what, uh, what it should be. And it'll kind of give you a, a fail rating down here and tell you where you're at. So right here, total proposed is 42.85. But my reference house, remember we talked about the reference house, based on how everything's set up is 39.23. So something something is is absorbing more energy than it's going to allow us. Remember we talked about with performance, we have pluses and minuses. So that if we have more pluses than minuses, we can pass. Well, in this instance, we have more minuses than pluses. So we need to go in and we need to figure things out. Now, we have to think about this when we're using the software. We want to make sure that we're not making changes that are going to greatly affect the client. So the first thing we start out with is not windows. Okay. We don't want to start. Windows are probably one of the most expensive things to change in a house. We don't want to do that. First, we want to look at some things is, hey, could we do a duct leakage test on this house and get extra points? Could we, is this house, does this house have a heat bomb system? Um, can we go to a higher sear heat pump system? Different things of that nature. So I'm going to click OK. And then one of the things I'm going to first look at is I'm going to look at the air conditioning system. And I'm going to see that it's a heat pump. OK, so I got a heat pump. I'm already 16 sear. That's decent. So we're, we're, we have a lot of pluses here. But what I'm going to look at is my ducts while I'm here. And I'm going to go in and see here it says default type duct leakage. That means that we're not, we're not doing a duct leakage test. We're just saying, hey, whatever the duct work is, when the duct work is, that's what it is. Now, with new construction, it's not mandatory when you use the performance method. It's not mandatory to do a duct leakage test. But I want to show you something. And we talked about this in the previous videos. And I'm not going to spend too much time on going through these because I want to just touch the software. But watch this. If I take this and I click on Proposed leak free. Okay. Factory sealed air handler. I'm going to change this to a 0.5 and then click apply. Now I'm going to rerun this and watch. The duct leakage test maybe cost two, three hundred dollars if they're there doing a blower door test. But watch. When I go back down here and I click on this, and I click on Run Compliance, see if this is going to make a fool out of me. It happens quite a bit. <laughs> so we run this test. We should pass now. 
because we got a ton of points. Look at that. We got a ton of points for doing the duck leakage test. Now, it doesn't mean that the ducks are going to pass. It means that we're going to test them. And then if they don't pass, somebody needs to go out and seal them up a little better and including the air handler. And then when we click on this, let's click on the PDF version. It's going to show me what that report looks like. So here's the report that it pulls up. And it's going to tell me this is just a checklist of things that need to be done um, before they turn this into the building department. But then it's going to give me all of my details. And we showed you this on the last. It's going to show me all the square footage. It's going to show me the window, solar heat gain coefficient, and U factors. It show me the SEER rating. And it's going to break everything down. Everything down that we entered into the system. All the walls, all the windows, the square footages, the volume. It's going to break everything down. So, boy, it makes it easy. It makes it so nice to be able to use that because when it passes, we're done. We print the report. We double check it because of, we want, a lot of times when you review your work afterwards, you'll find a lot of mistakes. So I'm very big on my team is when you print the final document, the one that's going to go to the building department, that's going to go to the client, the architect of the builder, you must review that one, not the software. Because many times you will catch problems and mistakes in the software that you made that you couldn't see by doing that. So that's a really, really great. So that's one of the reasons that we, we really love using uh, WriteSoft with their Write Energy uh, component. Now, some of the, uh, now th this Write Energy is paid because WriteSoft is a paid software. Okay? You have to buy a license. Uh, they have licenses that you can do year long or not year long, but lifetime licenses, which are a little more expensive. But then you still have to pay if there's any updates year over year. Uh, there's Then the other licenses they have are the yearly ones that you basically lease the license for the year. And then any updates that they get, you're automatically included. You don't have to pay for it. That's usually the one we go with. Uh, over, overall, we found that just economically it made more sense for us because we do so many. I mean, we do thousands of energy calculations a year all over the country. So Right Energy and Right Soft made it very easy for us to do it. Now let's look at one of the other. The other software that is free, we talked about this, is ResCheck. Okay. ResCheck is a free energy calculation software from the government. <laughs> I know. I know what you're saying right now. It's the government. Nothing's free. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But anyway, so ResCheck, it's free. Now, with the newer codes, anything from 2020 on up, or uh, yeah, 2020 on up, they ResCheck only has the web version. So if we were to use this for any of the newer states with the newer codes, we must use the web version. However, and you can go there just by launching this right here, and I already have that up. Let's uh, see if I'm my top center screen. Here we go. Okay, so here is the ResCheck web version, and it's free. You go into ResCheck web and on Google and click on it, and it'll pop it up, and you create your account. Um, our entire team has this account, and we go in and we add projects and whatnot. And again, now it's WriteSoft also has the ability, which makes it nice, for us to convert the right soft, and let me go back here and, and show you. See, uh, see, bottom right screen. We go right up here to the file and code compliance, and I can actually send a res check link. So when I've done the load calcs, I can put this in a res check. Now, res check and right soft talk a lot better. So when I convert this over to res check by clicking on that, I still have a little work I have to do, but every all my walls and windows and doors and equipment and everything like that is automatically put into ResCheck, which makes it really, really nice. So, so when we go in here, and it'll automatically end it in. It'll all, automatically put all the information in for the project. It automatically puts in all the envelope, all the project stuff here. It automatically puts in everything on the envelope. So if, uh, I look at the skylights, my ceilings, all my walls, and things of that nature. And it automatically puts in it. The only thing I have to do is go in and confirm that everything forwarded over into the software properly 
Uh, you can see here, let me slide over. You can see here the front side, the cavity R values and whatnot, U factors. But um, I can go in and manually check. Again, double checking your work to make sure just because it transferred over, we need to make sure if we're going to do a great job. And that's why ProCalc, as far as I'm concerned, obviously I'm pretty biased because I own the company, but I, I think we do a better job than anybody out there. Um, yeah, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And somebody tells you they don't make mistakes, they'll, they just made a mistake because they're lying. So really good. It's free. You can actually, and I know there's a lot of people out there that do that. You can actually take your own home, put your own home in here, create a free account. You don't need to pay for it. Create an account, go in and put your own home on this and see how bad your house is. Now, what you could do is find your compliance. You need to find out what your, um, where your place is located. So we want to click edit over here. And depending on where your house is located, you're going to have a code. And then you'll be able to determine. Now, they have certain locations that have specific codes that you want to click on. But if you watched the last video, we talked about learning what of the IECC codes your state is currently using. And you can click on your state and go to energy codes. You can actually go to the energy, uh, energycode.gov. And you can actually find your state and it'll tell you, uh, but it's always best to go on that IECC website and see what's the current adoption, what's the most recent one that they're using. And that'll, that'll help you out. You can also call the building department and the building department will tell you exactly what codes they are accepting. So this is cool. And we put it in, you put all your information in again. A lot of this will carry over um, when you use the software. But if you want to do your own house, you can go in and manually put in all these things. If I want to add windows, I can go in here and add a window. I can add a skylight. And then I just add the gross area. Now, you don't have to do, when we do ours for rights off, everything comes in, every individual window, every individual wall. But if you're just doing a whole house by yourself, you can actually go in and just do all the windows on one side of the house and all the windows on another side of the house and say, okay, my windows on the west side of the house total 300 square feet. And you can just plug that in. The tough part is knowing what your U factor and SHGC are going to be, but you can kind of play around with that. Or if you're looking to buy new windows, you can do something like this. I always recommend having an HVAC design company do them for you. This way, if there's any issues, you can make sure that those are taken out. Now, before 2020 codes came in, they had ResCheck software that you download. And we still use this for locations. I believe we still use this sometimes for locations that do not require the new 2020. But even with the new web, it, sometimes it's just easier to upload it. But th this is something, same concept. You go in here, you find your state. This one makes it, you know, can make it a little bit easier to find everything. You go in here for your code. Again, double checking what your code is so that you know where you're at. Uh, makes it real nice and easy. Again, free. These are free. Now, the last one that I want to talk about, which is unique over everything else, is Title 24, which is in California. Okay. Title 24. Now we use we use Rightsoft. And if you go here to Rightsoft, go to File, Code Compliance, they have a Title 24 option here. Same thing. We do the load calculations in Rightsoft. We click on that and it converts it over into a Title 24 document, which still requires some work and still requires that it get um, documented and registered for the, for the state of California. Title 24 is the most hands down, most difficult and restrictive energy compliance there is. Uh, obviously, we know about California. They're usually ahead of the game on a lot of that stuff because the cost of everything is so high. So they're trying to bring some of those costs down as much as they can. But there are things that pass easily in Florida and just about every other state that will never, ever pass in California. So Title 24, there are softwares out there that do the Title 24, like Rightsoft has the ability to do that, which makes it nice. So when we do a house in California, we can go ahead and do the energy calculations right off of the load calc. And, and the benefit to us and to you as an architect, a builder, a homeowner, HVAC company, 
is when somebody does the energy calculations first, and we see this a lot, like the architect will do the energy calculations and then send it over to us to do the load calcs, manual J, manual D. The energy calcs must match the load calcs. If the volume's off, if the windows are different, if the air conditioning tonnage and BTUs and anything like that, well, you don't know that stuff. You might know the volume and the windows, but you don't know exactly what the air conditioning BTUs and SEER and all that stuff is going to be. And what's going to happen is you're going to have to change the energy calculation because if they do not match and they get to the building department, you fail. Whether they're both right, except they don't match and they both would have passed, you will fail, period. The building departments want to see them both. Same equipment, same SEER rating, same size, same load calcs, same, same windows, same walls, same everything. And when we make those changes, now the energy calcs may not pass. So it's very important to have the load calculations done first. Then incorporate the energy calculations using one of these softwares that we've shown you here today. It makes it very important. It will make your life a lot easier. And the key, passing building review and building permit the first time. The inspections the first time. When you have that EPL document, we talked about in the last video, you have that EPL document and they look at that. If it doesn't match what's on the plans, because they're going to look at that, they're going to look at the plans, and they're going to look at what physically was installed. If they do not match, you fail. Whether they're right or wrong, you fail if they don't match. So it's important. So it's key. One of these softwares, if you're a homeowner or even a, a, a builder or an architect or HVAC company, you don't want to pay for software, well, because you just don't do it that much. You can use ResCheck in many states. And if you go to, and let's, let's see if we click on this up here. Um, and let's uh, see, it's top center. And let's go to ResCheck. Let's find the ResCheck website. So we go up here. And so let's say we want to go to uh, Colorado. I spelled Colorado wrong. There we go. So now here it's going to tell me what my current adoptions are. And I can go in here and I can verify. Current code model, 2009, man, talk about living in the dark ages. So now I can go in here and I can click on that and I can see now if I want to do my own energy calculations using ResCheck, I know what code that I need to go with and I can read up on that to see where we're at. Okay, so a lot of great stuff with the different software. If, if, if you're not technically into this, send this off to your architect or builder or to your HVAC company that's going to be doing these for us. I strongly recommend that you get an HVAC design company. Somebody who's got no skin in the game, who's got no monetary uh, value as far as uh, you know the HVAC company or the builder, or the architect. Somebody is just, if it fails, it fails. If it passes, it passes. And But using these different softwares, we can help you. Is Here's the factors that you want to build your house with. But after we put them in, if they don't pass, we can help you better understand what you need to change, kind of a value engineer, what you need to change to get your house to pass energy calculations. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Don't forget to go to ProCalcsUniversity.com for all of our podcasts. Podcasts get put up every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also go to theprocalcstore.com. We've got a lot of great stuff on there. Thermometers and thermostats and air filtration and air filters. You know, one of the podcasts that I just did today that's going to be posted up here shortly is on air filters. A lot of great information. It's not as simple as you think. So great stuff there. And as always, don't forget to email us at tom at procalcs.net if you have any questions. Have an absolute best day. I look forward to seeing you guys again.